Hi everybody, good Sunday morning to everybody here. Welcome to the YouTube page of Prophetess Natalie J. Guerra. I come to you on behalf of Affirm Family Ministries. Welcome guys. This message is actually for the subscribers that have been subscribing for uh, quite some time and you're engaging in the um, 10 day fast from February 1st until February 10th. I'm going to go ahead and go over the ground rules of the fasting. I've had some questions as to what fasting entails, some questions about what people should do. And so I just kind of wanted to go over some parameters of the fasting. I know I filmed a video and then I've been posting on the community sector of YouTube. As such, I will continue to post on the community sector of YouTube for you guys. So be be checking that continually because that's the way I'm going to be communicating with you guys for the fast, probably even more so than communicating on Instagram IG. So the community sector is really important at this time for the fast. So, um happy Sunday every guys. Um it is Super Bowl Sunday, and I am aware that it is Super Bowl Sunday. Guys, the fast does not stop. Stop. I know that it is probably going to be very difficult. Some of you guys are going to have parties, um, maybe starting before the game and stuff, and you're going to have all these wonderful, wonderful treats and surprises and pizza and and barbecue and all that and all that good stuff. And that's totally fine after three thirty three p.m. Remember, three 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 is your number. That's your number that you're striving for. So, uh realistically we want to have only liquids if not no liquids at all until 3 33 p.m today i know it's difficult i know it's it's going to be hard for some of you but please try your best to fulfill that um fulfill that parameter that you've set forward for yourself by engaging in this particular fast for leadership remember leadership is not for everybody the the, the purpose of this fast is for those who've been called unto un, unto leadership uh, you've either received a prophetic word from me, or you've re or you know that you've been called to the office of a prophet, pastor, preacher, teacher, um, or evangelist, and you want to rock that calling. But in order to rock that calling, it takes obedience coupled with sacrifice. And fasting is a proponent of sacrifice. Um, one of the reasons. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm rambling on. Let me just go ahead and give you the purpose of fasting. The purpose of fasting is to demonstrate sacrifice. Okay, the purpose of fasting is to demonstrate sacrifice. You are one with Jesus and are partaking in his sufferings when you engage in fasting. Because when Jesus walked the earth and did his ministry with the disciples, he did fast. Yes, he did. And if you go back to my teaching um, about meeting with the Lord in the secret place, I reference a verse in the Bible where Jesus speaks and states that it's not if you fast, but gives you principles of when you fast. Catch that. It's not if you fast, but gives you principles of when you fast. Highlighting the fact that fasting will be done at some duration during your time in your walk on this earth with Jesus. So again, I, if you go back and watch the, the video, um, Secret Place, um, it was two, it was two videos ago, then you know that this fast is specifically for those who are called to leadership. What are we fasting? We're fasting number one as sacrifice. Because when you are weak, the spirit is strong. Catch that. When you are weak, the spirit is strong. Okay. So that's why we're fasting. We're also fasting to deprive ourselves because when we are weak and we're depriving ourselves of the nutrients and things that we need at a certain time, then the spirit can work in and through us. And whether you're at your job, whether you're driving around during the day, your mind is focused on Jesus. And, and it doesn't stop there. Even when your fast is done and when you have the time, please go into your prayer room even after 3.33 p.m. Doesn't matter if it's after 3.30. When you can fit in the time to go to your prayer room in that day, you fit that in. And the Holy Spirit is faithful to talk to you. Three reasons why we're fasting in this leadership fast. Principle number one, we are fasting 
to enlarge our territory. If you are called to a place of leadership, whether the Lord has ministered to you that it's in the public sector or the private sector, um, being in ministry, or you own a business or you're doing something where the Holy Spirit has informed you and advised you that your business or whatever you're doing in the secular realm is indeed your ministry, then you're, then, then this fast is for you. But that there's kingdom purpose in our ministry. Amen. So we're in end times. The Lord wants to increase and expand our territory to expand our influence, not for, for our sake, but for those other for those other people who are not saved yet, to equip them, to bring them up in Christ. That's what you're fasting for. You're fasting to enlarge your territory. Enlarge your territory, not for yourself and not for boasting, but for kingdom purpose. Amen. But for kingdom purpose. That's what you're fasting for, to enlarge your territory, to expand your territory so that you can be more influential in this kingdom age for God's purpose. And you can go and reference Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 to read the story of Jabez and to also find the prayer of Jabez. And tomorrow I will be posting on the community sector the prayer of Jabez. You should be praying and referencing the story of Jabez during this fast every night. You should be repeating the prayer of Jabez to yourself every morning and every night. Also. Principle number two, during this fast, we are also praying for the Lord to pour more of his gifts into us so that we can look more like Christ. When we are called to be leaders for Christ, we need to not, we need to be less of ourselves and more like Jesus. Amen. We need to be less of ourselves and more like Jesus. So in this fast, we're also praying for him to pour more of his spirit into us, for him to pour in more of his giftings into us, because when he does that, we have a bigger impact on the world because we look less of ourselves. We look like less of ourselves and we look more like him. Yes, catch that. We look less like ourselves and more like him. So we were asking and praying and fasting for the Lord to be faithful to pour more of his gifts. Remember, we're, we are called to steward his gifts. They are given to us freely, but we must be good. We must steward them well. We must not be reckless with them. And we must ask the Holy Spirit to teach us how to steward those gifts well. And we want more of them, not for our own volition, but to be a bigger impact on the body of Christ for the equipping of the saints for such a time as this. For such a time as this. That is why we are praying for our territory, number one, to be expanded. Also, for more of himself, more of Jesus to be poured into us so that we can look more like him and we can have a bigger impact in asking the Holy Spirit to show us what gifts he wants to pour more into us of and also how to steward those well so that we're not reckless, but that we use wisdom in, in navigating how the Lord wants us to utilize his gifts for others. Remember, our gifts are not for ourselves. Our gifts for others. They're for others. They're to bless others. Principle number three is to pray for your God-ordained spouse. If you already are married, you continue to pray for them. You continue to pray for the Lord to utilize both of you in your kingdom marriage so that you can have a large impact on the world. If you have children, you continue to pray during this fast for your children and you call forth your children's gifts and your children's ministry, ministry if the Lord has told you that they're gifted. Also, you pray for your grandchildren, whether they're born or not. You pray for them. You pray for revelation so that you know what. When you pray for revelation, the Holy Spirit gives you revelation about what their gifts are. Then you can start to pray for what those gifts are because now you have revelation. Amen. If you are not married, then you are not doing divination. You're not trying to pair yourself up with somebody that is not ha does not know that, th that they're yours. <laughs> And you're not petitioning God's throne for someone who he has not called you to be with. We're not doing witchcraft prayers. We are not doing um, our own divination prayers. 
we if 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 you're engaged or you're betrothed or you know who your spouse is, then yes, you can you can pray for them in advance. Otherwise, you're asking the Holy Spirit for revelation about characteristics of them, what their calling is. Very specific, yet at the same time general that you don't have to know them yet. But even if you're not with them, you can know them by their spirit. Amen. And you ask the Holy Spirit to download revelation about that so that you can pray for their calling. You can pray for your kingdom marriage in advance. You can pray for their deliverance. You can pray if they have children already. You can pray for your children that if the Holy Spirit downloads to you that you're going to have children together. And you can call forth their gifts. Amen. You can call forth the ministry that the Lord has ordained to you and entrusted to you. When you are in faithful prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what your purpose is with your kingdom spouse. You decree and declare out of your mouth that you receive it and you pull it down from heaven as it is. Pull it down from heaven and make it on earth as it is in heaven. For when the appropriate time comes, the Lord is faithful to answer your prayers. That is what we are praying for in principle number three. Principle number one, increase and enlarge our territory. Principle number two, more of him, less of us. Him to equip us with his gifts and his wisdom on how to steward them to make an impact for the equipping of the body of Christ. Principle number three, you're praying for your God-ordained spouse, whether you're already in covenant marriage or if you're not, you're praying for revelation on them about their characteristics, about what they're calling us so that you can pray for them in advance. That you can pray for your children if you're to have children in advance. Even your grandchildren. The Lord is faithful to build a legacy in and through you. You are the David in your family. Amen. What are we doing during our fast? You guys, your fast is from wake up time until 3.33 p.m. every day. You may consume food after 3.33 p.m. each day. I know that with fasting, if you fast all day, especially if it's a dry fast, you can be extremely hungry at 3.33 p.m. I encourage you to buy snacks, healthy snacks, so that when 3.33 comes in, you're not running to eat the largest meal and over-consuming because that can be detrimental to your body. You want to have your solid meal, but when 3.33 comes, it's wise before you partake in a large meal to snack first. Have some granola bars on hand, some yogurt, some fresh fruit, some veggies, um, I know, again, that's probably like, oh, you know, it's really healthy, but it's imperative for your health that you don't dive into the first cheeseburger that you see because that's not healthy for your body during a fast. And and trust me, I get it. There's going to be days where you are going to do that. You're going to be like, okay, I'm starving. 3.33 is up. I need to eat. And you run to whatever. And and there's going to be days in the 10 days where that happens. And I I get that. I'm going to have those days too. I admit, on the last fast that we did on January 11th, I Googled, what time does In-N-Out close? And I was like, fast is over at 111. I think I'm going to be in line like at 120 because I'm going to get some French fries because I'm starving. And then I was just like, okay, wisdom, I don't need to be on the road that late. And number two, I don't need to be putting in my body that late. It's not, it's not a necessity. So I was grateful that I did have some granola bars and some, some crackers. And I just snacked on them because right after that it was bedtime and it wasn't, it wasn't healthy for me to go to bed on a full stomach. So I get it. I relate. I totally get it. I I was like contemplating doing that too. And I'm saying there probably be, will be a a few days during this fast where I do that. and, And I run to get something you know, that appeases my body or appeases my palate because I'm super starving. And that's okay. Just don't make it every day because that's not healthy for your body. When your body is fasting, you don't want to run to the largest meal as soon as 3.33 hits. Wait about an hour, wait about an hour and a half, and be snacking in between the 3.33 p.m. time and the and the first meal that you have so that you don't overindulge in a super large unhealthy meal. If you want to do that once or twice, three times during the fast, how about it? I get it. Don't make that every day, though. Try to snack before you have your largest meal. I also had some questions about fitness. If you are engaging in fitness and your hardcore fitness, you want to be referencing the Holy Spirit's instructions to you about your body. Everybody's different. There are some people that are going to be able to do the regular workout routine while they're fasting. I typically, because I work and teach, I'm typically not working out in the morning. So fasting isn't going to affect my workout routine for the simple fact that I don't work out until I get out of work. And I usually don't start my workout until like five o'clock. 
So I won't be working out at the time that I'm fasting. My body will probably be low in energy because I will be working out on just the snacks that I've had um, in a small meal and haven't had a large meal. Um, I have to use wisdom and I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. There might be some days where I'm where I'm low on fuel and I have to I have to take heed and the Holy Spirit might say, it's not wise for your body to work out today. And I have to heed and, and I won't be able to do that. And there's some days where the Holy Spirit might be, go get him, Tiger. Like, do your do do your four or five mile run. And I'll do it. Or there might be days where my body is like, you can do it, but you have to go a little bit lighter. So you have everybody's everybody's body's made differently. Some people have been working out for a long time and, and they can handle it. Um, some of you might need to take a day or two off of working out, especially if working out is during your fasting time. Right now, my working out regimen is not during my fasting time, so it isn't going to affect me as badly. But I understand that um, I might need to take a few days off from working out for the Holy Spirit's heating because fasting can also bring up deliverance. Fasting can also bring out cleansing. Fasting can also make you weak, not only physically, but spiritually for the day. Because it could bring up things and you might be crying a lot. That is as a normal principle that happens a lot during fasting. You can have deep revelation that sometimes make you makes you overjoyed. Or you could have like not good revelation on the Holy Spirit prodding you to deal with things that you need to deal with. And you could be emotionally drained. And if you're emotionally drained, sometimes it's good for you to work out. But the Holy Spirit sometimes has told me that I've been so emotionally drained by revelation that I need to take a whole week out of working out. And and I don't take kindly to that because I don't like to uproot my regimen. But the Lord's proddings come before what I want. Catch that. The Holy Spirit's prodding has come before what I ever want. And I know that the Lord knows best for my body. And there's been weeks at a time where I'm birthing something spiritually in the spirit realm. Or my body's gone through a lot uh, emotionally because of what's been downloaded through Revelation. And it's not best for me to work out at that time. I actually need to double up on my vitamins at that time. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will be like, how at it? You need, you need to eat like double portions because your body's going through a lot. And there's sometimes on the counter where I have so many things going up. Uh, on where it's like I can't I can't eat it's everybody everybody's body is different and everybody's experience of fasting is going to be different some of you might not be hungry even after your fast some of you might be exceedingly hungry some of you may be able to work out my best recommendation is to listen to the Holy Spirit's heating you may need to take it easy but the goal isn't to take it completely easy to to say oh I'm fasting I don't need to do my regular routine you still need to go about your regular routine and if that includes working out, try your best to do that. But don't don't over overdo yourself to where you're making yourself sick. Okay, we we I don't want and I don't encourage that to happen. But you don't want to go so light that you're not even yourself while you're fasting and not doing your re, doing your regular regimen, so that it's not even a challenge to you. This is to challenge yourself. So if working out while you're fasting and continue with that as a challenge to yourself, then see how long you can go with the Holy Spirit's prodding. And if the Holy Spirit's like, this is too much on your body, then tailor it. Then modify it. When I was doing my 40-day fast, um, I, I, I fasted for 40 days during the summer. Um, and I, I was able to eat after 2 o'clock. Each day, the Holy Spirit gave gives me the numbers to do my own fast and for you guys. That's where I got 333 from. So last one for me during the 40 days in the summer was uh, to stop. after I could eat after 2 p.m. every day. But I wasn't working in the summer because teachers don't work. So I was running the business, but I wasn't teaching. But um, I was doing a really, really hardcore um, flat and dance class. And it was like, it was like Zumba on steroids. It was like, if you ever go to the gym and see them do like dance classes, this was like that times five. Okay, with weights, and she's like super hardcore. And I asked the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit was like, you're not fasting all day, you're fasting till 2. So you're not sleeping on, on your summer break till 10 o'clock so that you only have really a few hours where you're awake and it's not a challenge. You get your butt up every day at 6 o'clock, get ready, you're at your dance class in the morning, and you still go to your dance class. You still go to your dance class. This is challenging for you. You work out, and I would I would be out of workout, and I, my mom would be like, Let's let's go eat. I'll be like, I, I can watch you and I can have a coffee. I can have water. I can't eat. Mom, I can't eat. I can't eat till after two. And it was challenging because that challenged my body to be able to do my workout with the Lord's strength. Um, 
and be like, oh my gosh, like I'm super starving after workout and not and only be able to rely on the Lord's strength for those 40 days until I was able to eat at two o'clock. And there were some days where I did have to listen and I couldn't work out. And there were some days where I had to go easy. But there was a lot of days where I just went straight hardcore and the Holy Spirit got me through. But it's good to have, it's why it's so important to have that relationship with Christ so I know what, when to do it and when not to do it. And everybody's story is going to be different. I can't give a one size fits all. Some of you guys are going to powerhouse through your workouts like nobody's business. Some of you, the Lord may be like, not now, boo. Not now. Just depends. Just depends. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the still, soft voice. Or if you need to do it when you do have some caloric intake in your body after 3.30 p.m., 3.33 p.m., sorry, and do it then, so be it. But remember, no food from wake up time until 3.33 p.m. And then when it comes time for bedtime, you want to get a little cracker, a little saltine cracker, cut it up, or a little piece of bread to symbolize the body of Christ, and get some grape juice. Get some grape juice, get a cup, put a tiny little portion of your grape juice in your cup, put eat a little piece of the bread to take communion and sanctify yourself every day. If there was any sins that you need to repent for during the day, you want to do that during this fast nightly before you go to bed by time, okay? Um, again, small portion of grape juice, a tiny little piece of bread, or a tiny little piece of saltine cracker before you go to bed nightly, repenting of anything that you could have asked for revelation and repent for anything that you did that was not holy during the day or in accordance with the Lord's will. And you also want to pray the purpose of communion is to be in, commu in, in communion, in community with Christ. Thank the Lord for this fast. Thank you for sending. Thank Yeshua for sending Thank, thank Yahweh for sending Yeshua to us. Thank him. Thank him for sending his only son that we may partake in Jesus' sufferings and sacrifice symbolically through the fast. That we may partake in Jesus' sufferings sacrificially and symbolically through this fast. You pray that while you take your communion nightly it's okay i want you to take this seriously but i also don't want you to be a nervous wreck or like if you forget something in all transparency i was with my family late last night i had some things that i needed to do i did my fast while i did it with excellency um i had coffee and water no food at all until after i actually didn't eat until like seven o'clock um but I didn't have the stuff for my communion, so I'm going to be starting communion today. It's okay. And I will be posting the prayer of Jabez tomorrow on the community sector. So in, in coordination with what you're fasting for, you are also praying the prayer of Jabez. And you are also taking communion nightly. Small piece of bread or cracker and a small tiny amount of grape juice to cover your sins. Repent. And also to praise Jesus in prayer for coming and being the sacrificial lamb. Amen. So I hope that goes over everything. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's called the First Fruits Leadership Fast. Leadership because it's for those who are called into leadership. And those people will know who they are. Also, First Fruits. First Fruits is to sow a seed financially into this ministry. What that means is picture a farm, picture a harvest. The Bible offers, often references things symbolically. So picture a harvest, okay? Um, it's harvest time. If you have a feast and you're giving to people, do you want to give in your feast the, um, do you want to give the leftovers? No, you want to give the best portion you can possible to your guests, to the people that you're serving, to the people that you want to bless. So essentially, if it's a harvest and you're feeding people and you're sowing into their lives, then you want to give the best. You don't want to give the leftovers. You don't want to be like, oh, this is the piece of bread that I have left over. Chew on that. No, you want to give your first fruits from your harvest of your farm. You want to give your first fruits. Catch that. That's not a tithe. 
It's not giving honor. It's a seed to sow unto this fast. It's an addition to a tithe. It's an addition to showing honor. But you want to give your best financially. Okay, so the Holy Spirit will prod you what your best is. The Lord is faithful to give you the amount. If you're struggling, then he probably won't give you a high amount. Or maybe he will because it'll be an act of faith. Everyone's situation is different. If you don't have something to sow into the ministry financially, sacrificially give of yourself something other than the fast. Okay? Um, you can even give stuff away. But the purpose is to sow financially unto the ministry, sow a seed into the ministry. If there's a, another ministry where you attend and you feel that that is fertile ground, you may sow there. But primarily, it's technically unto this ministry. We are the one that's hosting this fiasco. It's to give your best. It's to give your first when you receive your paycheck financially. That's in addition to your tithing people wherever you go to church. It's a different concept. And the Holy Spirit's probably going to have to teach on this concept. First fruits, your first fruit of your harvest to bless whoever you want to, to to bless this ministry that's what it is it's a seed it's a planted in the ground it's symbolically like if you had a farm you wouldn't give your guests the worst the leftovers the scraps you don't do that this is to sow your best i will be sowing my best until the ministry where the lord has told me to sow my seed I sowed last time too. Actually, I did all three principles last time. I sowed onto the ministry that's feeding me prophetically. Still tithe to the church where I go to every Sunday. And I showed honor to the prophet who mentors me. Catch that. Three different principles. But we're only talking about sowing a seed in this fast. Sowing a seed, your best. Give your best. What the Holy Spirit is faithful to tell you what the best is. Jesus doesn't give you his leftovers. So sowing your first fruits will be sowing your best. It's symbolically. If you had a, people have asked what's first fruits. It's symbolically. If you had a harvest, if you had a farm and you had guests over, would you give them your scraps? No. You plant your best into the ground. You put your best foot forward. That's what it means. So I hope this blessed you and kind of broke everything down. I have to get going because I have a long day. Sundays are very long for me. I have I have church and then I have a class after and then Prophetess Rachel has her kiddos and, and we, we do stuff with the kiddos after and I have very busy Sundays. So I, I pray you all have such a blessed day. And if you're watching Super Bowl, have at your food after 3.33 p.m. I will be praying for you and keeping you guys in mind. I want you to not feel alone. I want you to feel like this is a place of home home to you. You know, we use the tagline. So if you're ever posting anything on, on your on your media or you're posting anything to the community sector or your personal IG or Facebook page, you can reference the ministry and the hashtag that we're going by now for any fast corporately. This ministry is hashtag we did it. And again, it's not for us to boast. But if you're communicating through the ministry online or you just have to reference that maybe you had a breakthrough or something, okay, don't be posting every day about your fast, okay? But if you want to take one day to post about something wonderful you're doing for the Lord, that's okay. I did reference the Bible verse. Remember in our last teaching that we're not supposed to be hypocrites and tell everybody we're fasting? I get that. But if there's a day where you just, the Lord just ministered to you through this fast or something incredible happened... It's okay to share that, but the hashtag for our corporate fasting through the ministry is now referred to as hashtag we did it. The Lord actually gave that to me through the last fast, but I forgot to share with you guys. Be checking the community sector. I will be posting tomorrow the prayer of J Buzz for you to reference. I did talk about what community is, be doing that nightly. Also be putting on your armor every day. When you're weak, the spirit is strong, but the enemy will try to attack you. When you're physically weak. So be putting on your full armor of God. Okay. I went over the principles. I think it's pretty well laid out for you guys now. Um, I'm rooting for you all. I'm rooting for you all. I want you to feel like you're part of a community. And that you're doing something together. As the body of Christ. I want you guys to feel that synergy. That you're not alone. It's a very intimate experience. But I want you guys to feel that you're not alone. Jesus loves you. I love you guys with the love of Jesus 
And I listen faithfully and fervently to listen to the Lord's directions. This isn't from me. This is from the Lord to put on these fasts, to how to do it, when to stop, the times to do, the, the dates and times to do it. I don't just pop out of my head with 3.33 p.m. Everything has been through fervent prayer to the Holy Spirit and obedience to administer this, not only to you guys, but for me to partake in it myself. So, um... Just have a blessed Sunday, and I really just want to reiterate that you're not alone. We're in, we're in this together. Everyone's experience will be different, um, but I, I pray that you're blessed through this experience and that it would open your eyes, and the Lord would be faithful to answer your prayers for kingdom purpose, not for our purpose, but for kingdom purpose. So I will I will check in some days with you guys um, on videos, but mostly through the community sector. Okay, God bless each and every one of you. Have a happy, blessed Sunday, February 2nd, 2-2, double numbers. Um, God bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye.